I'm past the uh, freaking out point, and um, I'm gonna get my brain fixed, so I'm excited. And yeah. One of uh, my very first memories of Lauren is constant singing. First, she started um, with commercials. She used to memorize commercials and sing, you know, the Dollop of Daisy <laughs> commercial. They know that I'm not shy at all. I'll dance anywhere inappropriate. Um, I don't care if people are looking. She's always been kind of a crazy girl, really emotional, really loving. Very emotional. Um, the smallest things can bother me a lot, and that probably gets old to them, but... I mean, they just, they, they accept me, they deal with me, they love me, deep down. <laughs> She's always been happy, basically a happy, a happy person. Well, that's a, oh, he kissed her on the forehead. Oh, I said her got a boo up. Her boo boo up, she got a boo boo up here, so be careful. She can't, if she, can't she can't see. relate to it if she can't, can't see it. You can't see it, it's an invisible boo-boo. I actually found out that I am missing a piece of my brain. It was a weird, it was a weird thing. It was, she, they told us she had a bruise on her brain. And we had been there that whole night and she was born at noon. Then I came home and that night I slept and the next morning I got a call from Gail at the hospital and she said that Lauren had had a seizure. And the neonatal specialist had told us after she had a CT scan, they said, well, she's got a bruise on her brain, she could be fine or she could be a vegetable, you know, no bedside manner at all. But anyway, she was fine. She was fine. We took her home from the hospital. She didn't have a seizure from that day until 15 and a half. I have epilepsy. I have had it. Um, it's been affecting me since I was 15 years old, so I've been dealing with it for eight, um, eight years. I think one of the toughest times for me was um, in August of 2012 when she had been like five and a half months from having a seizure. In two more weeks, she was gonna be able to drive again. So we went to Publix and we went shopping about 15 minutes. We were walking around the store together. We'd split up to get different things for, and it wasn't more than 60 seconds. And I heard these people yelling and I just, at first I was thinking, what are they yelling? I went, uh oh, I know what's going on. And I raced over there and she was on the floor and had hit her head, I guess, um, having a seizure and people were standing around and I just ran up and dove, made it like a baseball guy sliding into base and dove down and grabbed her head and just, and uh, she just was having this horrible seizure there. That's the one thing that, you know, my life revolves around now and I hate that it does. I always said, like, it's, it's not going to define me. Having epilepsy and having seizures is not going to define me, but realistically, they have, you know, at least at this point, taken over my life because I have to be so careful in every aspect. If they didn't think they could help her, they wouldn't be doing the surgery. In other words, there are people who have seizures over different parts of their brain, or they can't tell exactly where they're coming from, or they're on both sides of their brain that are not candidate. those people are not candidates for surgery. They want to have me awake for the surgery. It's called an awake craniotomy. And that sounds crazy. But they also say, you know, the biggest thing is that there is a possibility that I will come out of the surgery and not be myself and that I won't, that I won't be me. I just, I need to think of it in a positive way, and it's been scary.
So it's been two weeks and I'm feeling very good and now it's just a process of waiting and hoping that the problem has gone away but I feel very positive about it. I feel very good. <laughs>